today is the day we met the budget ZTEC Turbo. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm sure it'll be fine, let's crack on. So yeah, as you can tell, Ollie's been quite busy. He's finished off the cab. He's put the drive shafts in. He's put gearbox oil in. He's filled it up with antifreeze. He's checked the oil level. He's run it up to temperature. All the cooling fan cuts in and out. Everything, everything's as it should be, isn't it? It's all right. Oh yeah, got to plumb the wastegate in. We're gonna need that, mate. Barring that, everything's all right. So it should be time to make some numbers so like it would be really really nice to say like let's just give it a full send and just shove loads of boost for it and see what happens but the guy who owns this car ginge as you now have seen in previous videos this is his car and he's never driven this car but he's owned it over 10 years so he finished it off over 20 years oh wow okay well there you go he's had it for like 20 years and he kind of wants to drive it um and he hasn't driven it yet so we don't just want to go and like wang loads of boost into it and see what happens we're just going to get it on the dyno dial it in leave it at whatever the waste gate makes which is what probably about 12 13 psi the external gate now hopefully if we can get it to that see what power it makes at that fine tune it and then let him drive it for a bit before we um give it a full send so yeah let's have a little sort out get it on the dyno she's on the dyno got her all strapped down and squared up got the fan on legendary fan that everyone loves uh just gone to get uh ollie's just gone to get a cable tie it's coming back now ready Ta-da! cause the size of them they're the big ones yeah oh, all that for a little vac pipe yep. oh, i must have a little one somewhere I just want to cable tie that pipe onto the wastegate because it doesn't fit too well we don't want that coming off obviously um what else i uh, need to take the bung out of the exhaust actually Put the uh, Lambda sensor in, Lambda sensor in there, as people keep correcting me on that as well. Uh, get the laptop out, connect the ECU, and uh, yeah, just put some fresh plugs in it as well. So that should eliminate any problems. More money, you owe me, Ginge. <sighs> right, I'll carry on getting it plumbed up, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So if you're new to this channel and this is like the first video you've seen on this car. Um, I suggest you go back and watch part one and part two um, but I'll give you a little summary of what this car is or what this engine is rather um, so this is a full focus SD170 bottom end with a pair of head gaskets oh yeah and in part two I kept saying that head gaskets were 0.3 millimeter they're not they're 0.6 so it's an SD170 bottom end with a two millimeter decon plate and 2.6 millimeter head gaskets to lower the compression with a black top head we put the SD170 valve springs in this head. It's got a turbocharger off of some sort of a Renault lorry, like a four litre diesel turbo thing. So it's not great, but it was really cheap and it seems to make the numbers. Um, it's on a Cam SECU with a Volkswagen Cup Polo coil pack. Um, it's on a standard two litre focus inlet manifold that Ollie ported out the injector holes to fit, um, I think he's got Rover turbo injectors in. So they're like 380 cc, something like that. Uh, Cosy fuel pump under the back. Or an O4, Cosy or O44? Just an escort. Just oh, just, okay, just an escort turbo fuel pump under the back then. Um, uh, Cosy intercooler, Ali Rad. The wastegate is like a Turbinetics wastegate thing, external gate, because the standard uh, Renault wastegate wouldn't actually um, bypass the exhaust gases quick enough, so max boost all the time. So we've sort of bodged this into a standard two litre manifold to just try and see if we can um, hold boost. So yeah, let's see what happens. Right, let's crack on. I think we're about ready. Uh, Lambda controller, Lambda sensors in. I've got my controller all powered up here because my dyno one died. Uh, I've also got my KS3, not controller because I do not want no detonation with standard pistons because <laughs> it will be terminal. Um, a bolt with a knock sensor onto the back of the block. Luckily, the SD170 block actually comes with a stud for a knock sensor. So, if you're going to build, a... you're right there. All right. <laughs> so, if you're going to build a ZTEC turbo, 
the best block to start with technically you know like an easy to get hold of block anyway is an sd170 block because just for the knock sensor and they've got an extra all gallery bung haven't they they've got three all gallery bungs as well so one for the turbo one for the um precious light and one for actual pressure gauge if you really want to be that technical although the star motor gets in the way on one of them but yeah that's not the point right uh, i'm going to run it up on the dyno going to dial everything in just see how it sort of pans out so yeah wish me luck so i've dialed it in a little bit uh i've done a few little runs but not actually logged to see how much power it makes so um i hand the gopro to molly and see what happens It didn't blow up. So I've been doing some tweaking and because obviously it's low comp now and the old map was for like a high comp turbo engine so there was like no ignition into the map at all so I've uh, been ploughing ignition into it closely monitoring the knock control and it don't sound like it's dead in and it's making more power so we went from originally what did it start making? 100 and 160 yeah so it, it did make like 160 so it did make 160 horsepower and um, we've tweaked loads of ignition into it because obviously it's low comp now and now we're getting like 175 we're about at the knock limit so i'm going to kind of leave it there but we're at really really low boost so we're only making about eight psi boost um, i can't actually log boost on the dyno so uh we need to um try and crank the boost up but luckily this turbonetics wastegate that we found actually has like an allen key bolt in the middle so you can loosen off the lock nut tighten up the preload on the spring and hopefully it'll make more boost won't it hopefully. so we're trying to get we realistically we need to see 200 horsepower don't we so if we can see a 200 horsepower out of this for now like that will do i know like the whole world says these engines make 300 brake it should make a minimum of 300 brake but i kind of want to drive the car on the road because not been on the road yet it literally has been from down there to here run up on the dyno went wrong back down there built this engine and that's it so yeah yeah right we'll crack on and we'll let you know so uh we cranked a little bit more boost into it and it made like 180 ish horsepower something like that so uh we've dialed a bit more into it we've tightened up the preload on the wastegate a bit more and um, we put a little bit more fuel into it just because it was it was safe for a forged engine but not for a squeeze cast piston type of engine so put a little bit more fuel into it a little bit more boost we're gonna do another power run see if it makes any more power so that's what we're gonna do now please don't die So we've been playing some more and we can't get it to go over like 8 psi. I don't know what's up with the uh, waist. You're just winding that up now, aren't you? <laughs> oh man, something's gonna go. Oh. So uh, we can't get it to make no more boost. It's making like 8 psi. But we have got it to make like a peak of 100 and about 183 horsepower. 100 and yeah about 183 184 horsepower which if we can get it to like 10 12 psi i think it'll go past 200 horsepower but we can't you've wound that right up now haven't you it's not all the way up there's a tiny bit there i know what's going to happen it's going to go from nothing to all of it and then big bang it's not that in though and the fuel's there so we're giving it its best chance yeah. How many turns did you wind that in? Two. Two? What, two full turns? No, one. One full turn. All right. Right, let's give it another power run, see what happens. So, 
we've made a little bit of a discovery. Um, couldn't work out why. <laughs> Every now and then we was getting like a, a weird sort of eggy clutch smell. And like, I thought, can't be the clutch. It's not making power to it. It's got an a, like a brand new AP4 paddle in it. Like new old stock. So we was thinking, there's no way the clutch is slipping. But we kept getting like that sort of clutchy brake pad sort of smell. And then I started noticing that under engine losses, my runs were like rolling down really quick. Now I've got a transmission loss of 60 horsepower. And I was like, I can't believe that. Like there's no way I'll have like a 60 horsepower transmission loss. Uh, and then we've realized the brake discs are red hot. So we've determined that we can't turn the wheel by hand. So we're pretty confident, obviously the brakes are binding. Um, we did muck about with the servo a little bit while the engine was out and we tried to move the servo a little bit closer. So got a feeling might have got a measurement wrong because now the brakes are binding so they're obviously binding on the run up and they're binding on the way down so I'd like to believe because this dyno calculates transmission loss that it is actually making 185 horsepower which is probably about right it's a low comp ZTEC with about 8 psi boost in it now oh and that's another thing as well we can't get any more boost into it um, we've tightened the uh, like the nut up on the back of this like wastegate that we've got and uh, we've tied it up as much as we dare. It's going right into the nut now. Oh, hang on. So we've tightened up the nut on the wastegate as much as we can to try and add some preload to the spring. But the boost just isn't climbing, so we can't get any more boost out of it. I could probably muck about and maybe try to put boost onto the top of it and bleed it out the bottom, but oh, man, I'd rather just get a better <laughs> wastegate. Um, and we need to sort out the binding brakes. A bit annoying, because it was all going so well. Um, but yeah, so a low comp ZTEC with about 8 psi boost making 185 horsepower. So 10, 11, 12 psi, it should make, I don't know, well past 200 horsepower. If we can sort out the binding brakes, maybe we can muck about it a bit more. But Ollie's just trying to take the clevis pin out. So if we can get the clevis pin out and try and get the servo out, see if the brakes free off. But yeah, annoying, annoying. Right, we will crack on and see if we can bodge something up. So the mystery of the uh, massive transmission loss calculation was obviously down to the binding brakes. Um, we couldn't get the clevis pin out the back of the like the servo where the bar connects. So Ollie just undone the like the four 30 mil nuts that hold the servo to the bracket. Um, just slacken them all off and now pulled the servo away. As soon as the servo got pulled away, I could literally just turn the wheel on the dyno. Like I couldn't do this before. And now we've got like a transmission loss of like, uh, I think it's like, 14 horsepower something like that which is a lot more believable only downside now is the car's only making 179 horsepower rather than 185 not that it's that much difference um we physically can't get any more boost into it because we've tightened that nut all the way up it's literally about to disappear inside the wastegate if we turn it anymore um so we for a minute we was like that'll do we'll leave it at that you know and i've literally looked at the logs on the laptop well not the logs but i've watched the kpa and flat out it's only seven psi so it's really not making a lot of boost. Like I wanted it to make at least 10, but we just, without changing the wastegate, we can't crank any more boost into it. Um, I haven't got a boost control solenoid down here, not one that works with a KMS CCU anyway. So we can't put a boost control solenoid on it. But Ollie come up, come up with the really good idea of going down to his unit and digging out a T piece off of like a washer jet. So what we're gonna do is T into the top line and then just try and bleed some boost away that way. If we can get it over 10 PSI, we'll be happy. So, um, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put more boost into it that way. <sighs> Never ends, does it? Oh, and he's coming back, right. We're gonna fit the T-piece and uh, I'll be back. Oh no, I should say, I'm gonna crack on. Right, so we fit the T-piece. Where's me? Keyboard. Oh. Right, we fit the T-piece and we have um, up the boost protection because everyone loves a bit of boost protection. Turn that up a bit. So we're gonna do a little run now. I'm gonna keep close on the air fuel ratios and we're gonna see if it makes any more power. Right, watch this space. Two hundred and 
two horsepower. That'd do, wouldn't it? It's over 200 brake. Plenty of fuel in it. But well, plenty of fuel in it. I think it might pour power if I pull it out. Yeah. It, was, it was like heating injector duty. I was like, huh? But then when I see how rich it was, I was like, oh, okay. Pull some out. Try again. Down. Right, so it's about half past eight at night and we're going to call it a day before we get into trouble basically. Um, so we ended up um, fitting the little T-piece into the wastegate which bled the boost out to about 10 psi, about 9, 10 psi, something like that. And it ended up making 201 horsepower. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to get carried away and try and crank more into it. I'm just going to leave it as that. The, the mat does need dialing in a little bit more. It's a little bit too rich, so I might pull some fuel out of it and make a little bit more horsepower, but not too much. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Budget ZTEC Turbo, SD170 bottom end, black top head, turbo hanging off a standard manifold, 200 horsepower. Should be fun for the road. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that for now. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe. If you don't, then don't. Cheers, guys.